Lesson 35, A Simple Role-Playing Game To follow along with this lesson, download the project from the top of our lesson page at zoax.net. In this lesson, we are programming a simple role-playing game. The gameplay works like this. Our hero starts out in a small dungeon with 10 monsters, numbered 0 through 9. The hero moves in four directions using the keys W, A, S, and Z. To attack a monster, the hero just moves into it. This program has three classes in it. We introduced classes in Lesson 30. The first is called Creature and is used to represent the hero and monsters in the dungeon. The second is called Dungeon and holds the map of the dungeon. The third is fairly long and is called Role Playing Game. This one does the bulk of the work. At the end, we have our main program. Our creatures have three attributes, which correspond to our private data members' attack, defense, and hit points. We covered private members in Lesson 34. Our creature class begins with a constructor that initializes our attributes attack, defense, and hit points with numbers in the ranges 0 to 99, 0 to 99, and 3 to 30, respectively. We explained constructors in Lesson 32. Below the constructor is the member function attack. We covered member functions in Lesson 31. For our attack function, we note that only the hero can move, so he is always the attacker. However, the roles of the attacker and defender are the same. Each attack has two random numbers between 1 and 100 generated for attack and defense. A hit is scored if the first roll is under the attack value, and the second is over the defense value. Lastly, we have the isDead function, which simply checks whether the hit points are at zero. Our second class, Dungeon, contains a simple 10x10 array of chars that are set to spaces for corridors or asterisks for walls. The constructor initializes the maze and the getMaze function simply returns the char at the location. Our third class is called Role Playing Game and holds a dungeon, a creature for the hero, an array of 10 creatures for the monsters, and a 10x10 array of creature pointers to designate the locations of the monsters and the hero. This class is somewhat larger than the others and begins with a constructor that seeds the random number generator, initializes the monster location pointers to zero, and then places the hero and ten monsters in the dungeon. Next is our query location function. This function takes a row and column and returns a char to tell what is at the location. A space for nothing, an asterisk for a wall, a number zero through nine for a monster, and an H for the hero. After query location is the move hero function. This function takes in one of four directional keys and translates it into a movement. The function begins by locating the hero. Then we adjust the next location to where he should move to. Finally, we check whether the square that he moves to has a monster or a wall on it and handle that accordingly. If the hero actually moves or attacks, we return true to update the game. The rest of the functions in this class are fairly simple. We have the print board function, hero is dead function, remove dead monster function. This function sets any location pointed to zero if it points to a dead monster. After this, we have our all monsters dead function to check whether any monsters are still alive, since killing all the monsters is a game ending condition. Finally, we have our locate creature function which takes a creature pointer and gets its coordinates. We use this to locate our hero when we move him and to locate dead monsters that need to be removed. Lastly, we have our main function which creates a game object and then runs the game loop. The game loop prints the board and then gets the next move and processes it. If the move was valid, then we check the end of game conditions such as the hero dying or all the monsters getting killed. We remove the dead monsters at each loop. This concludes the lesson.